Joining us for this edition of the News Review is Muhaymar Abu Sada, Professor of Political Science at Al-Azhar University from the besieged city of Gaza. And we also have Barry Grossman, international lawyer from Bali. Welcome. Uh, so, Mr. Abu Sada, if I could start with you, is the targeting of children by uh, is it, is it part of Israel's ethnic cleansing campaign, another tactic at intimidating the Palestinians to leave their native indigenous land? Well, good evening and many thanks for inviting me to be part of this program. Uh, let me say that over the past 74 years since the establishment of Israel in May of 1948, Israel uh, has carried and the Israeli uh, uh, authorities has carried a number of measures to displace the Palestinians and also to expel uh, 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 thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of Palestinians from their homes and villages. Let me start by saying that in the year of Nakba in 1948, uh, Israel expelled more than 800,000 Palestinians who were expelled by force by the Israeli uh, authorities and Israeli uh, uh, guerrilla uh, 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 organizations at that time, the Haganah, Stern, and Argonne. Israeli uh, uh, organizations or terrorist organizations which forced and expelled the Palestinians from their homes and villages and uh, it was uh, uh, later revealed by Israeli historians like Elan Babe and uh, Benny Morris and many others who basically uh, said that it was an Israeli plan or an Israeli official plan called Plan D or uh, dealt in, in Hebrew, uh, which was uh, 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 organized to evacuate Palestinian homes and villages from the Palestinian uh, 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 people or Palestinian inhabitants. And this Israeli policy has been carried out over the past 74 years. And uh, let me say that uh, uh, it, it, was, it happened again during the uh, 1967 war when Israel during the war and after the war expelled many Palestinians from the West Bank and Gaza to the neighboring Arab countries to Jordan and, and Israel and over also the past many years Israel has expelled many Palestinian prisoners or many Palati Palestinians who were detained for security and political reasons were expelled uh, uh, from their own home from their own villages like uh, the incident in 1992 when Israel expelled right. 415 Palestinian detainees to South Lebanon to Marj al zuhur which is a grave violation of international law and uh, 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 the Fourth Geneva Convention. Indeed. Uh, many Israeli violations, as we know, has been, uh, have been documented. Let's focus on the Israeli violations against Palestinian children. Uh, Barry, what does the silence of the international community towards the Israeli abuse of Palestinian children tell us? The, the hypocrisy of the so-called international community um, hardly bears commenting on in the sense that it is there, it has always been there, and will always remain there ever since uh, the occupying forces that illegally migrated to Palestine and in the process invented modern uh, terrorism uh, decided to unilaterally declare their existence as a nation state in violation of, of international law only to later use all manner of techniques uh, to, to, to get the United Nations to recognize their membership as uh, a nation state in full standing. Uh, but having said that about international hypocrisy, it's worth commenting also that uh, we constantly see all manner of claims being made about how the Geneva Conventions, for example, afford a special status uh, to the rights of minors and children uh, uh, involved in, in armed conflicts, be they uh, international or non-international armed conflicts and certainly since 
1977, when Protocols 1-2 were enacted, you know, the, the, the so-called protections afforded, afforded to minors have become quite a bit more specific. Um, 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 but having said that, uh, uh, you know, it's, a, it's very much a quagmire in working out what the rights of individuals and minors are under the Geneva Conventions because there are all manner of obstacles that have to be uh, uh, navigated before you even get to the question. For example, one uh, is whether the parties are bound by the Geneva Conventions. Another one is whether uh, one of the parties, the complaining party, uh, has standing to lodge a complaint, something which obviously uh, uh, Israel contests when it comes to Palestine. Uh, then we get on to the, to the question of whether it's a, an international armed conflict or not, uh, on to what rights uh, are afforded to minors in that situation. But having uh, said all of that, I think uh, the claims made for the Geneva Conventions are more often than not grossly overstated when it comes to protecting minors and in many instances, insofar as they are enumerated, tend to apply to prepubescent or uh, minors or minors under the age of 15 or sometimes even 12. And there's this area of minors uh, uh, between the age of 15 and 18 uh, uh, that allows almost an open season when you have a hostile occupying force uh, like Israel uh, taking the fight to a long-standing nation of peoples aspiring to have their state recognized. And uh, I think there's no question that what's taking place is part of the long-running program of ethnic cleansing uh, designed to demoralize the Palestinian people and ultimately expel them from their own uh, historical homelands so that uh, 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 Israelis uh, and Zionists from around the world can migrate to Palestine um, and uh, expand this uh, artificial entity they've created, which as of now still has undefined borders. But the real hypocrisy lies here, I would say. Um, there's no question that a people who are under occupation have a right to resistance and even armed resistance under international law. So it's really quite absurd to maintain that the occupying force can arrest, almost randomly arrest uh, minors and children uh, for exercising uh, their right to merely protest their own occupation and in doing so essentially run riot over the standard civil liberties that people take for granted around the world, like the right to legal representation, the right not to be arbitrarily arrested, the right not to be subjected to unreasonable search and seizure, the right not to be tortured or physically beaten. Uh, while on, on the other hand, what we see is when, when occupiers, when the squatters in these uh, camps uh, that are calculated to seize even more territory, engage in more settler violence against Palestinians, they are very rarely um, um, uh, dealt with under, under domestic occupation law. They're, they're given uh, uh, you know, a, a free ride. So it's really quite absurd. Yeah, Israeli, the troops is just stand, Israeli troops just stand idly by watching and in some cases, uh, reports uh, have emerged that they encourage these uh, settler attacks against the Palestinian towns, people in Palestinian towns and villages. Let me just return to Mukhaymar. Uh, so why do Israeli regime, why does the Israeli regime attack Palestinian children, usually in a military conflict, as Barry was alluding to? Uh, you've got a military fights against another military. In this case, you've got Israeli regime forces attacking children that are throwing stones at tanks. That is definitely a very good question. Uh, let me say that uh, as a result of the continued Israeli occupation of Palestinian land for more than half a century now, since 1967, that has resulted in Palestinian resistance against uh, the Israeli occupation forces. 
whether in Gaza, uh, uh, West Bank, uh, or East Jerusalem, uh, the Israeli uh, occupation practices against the Palestinians, which deprive the Palestinians of their basic political rights, has, resist, has resulted in resistance among all uh, 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 classes of the population, whether they are uh, 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 old, young, or, or even children who are resisting the Israeli occupation by, by a peaceful means, uh, whether uh, throwing stones against uh, the Israeli occupation forces or marching in, in, in peaceful uh, marches, uh, marches against the occupation. Now, why Israel resort to such uh, 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 policies which go, which go after Palestinian children, and it has, as it has been indicated by the Palestinian uh, Commission of Detainees and Ex-Detainees, which has basically uh, indicated that more than 600 Palestinians have been imprisoned under house arrest uh, by the Israeli uh, occupation forces in 2022, especially in East Jerusalem and in, 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 in West Bank. Uh, that is, uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, 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 the, the face of, of Zionism. That is the face of Israeli uh, occupation uh, practices. Uh, which is uh, uh, in violation of international law, in violation of, inter of the Fourth Geneva Convention, which uh, uh, results in deprivation of those Palestinian children of uh, 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 education, uh, uh, good uh, uh, health care, and, and even uh, 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 result in anxiety and other, uh, 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 other uh, right. uh, uh, measures against Palestinian children which also, as I mentioned, has been indicated by the Palestinian Commission of Detainees, which usually also put more burdens on the family of those Palestinian children who are arrested uh, by the Israeli occupation forces or put in house arrest. And some of the, in the cases, the Palestinian family will have uh, uh, to rent a house in another city to keep those Palestinian children under uh, the, under uh, the supervision of Israeli uh, court system or the Israeli occupation. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, very, uh, that, that's very disturbing indeed. Uh, Barry, very quickly, if you can, no occupation regime has lasted forever. You mentioned resistance. Is that the way for the occupation to end in Palestine? How it has worked. Uh, the Americans and their ultimate hypocrisy have decreed uh, that Palestinians should not be permitted to have resort to international institutions, international law, or help from allies. And that, of course, is the ultimate hypocrisy, because in America, there's no shortage of states where uh, Americans have a legal right to use lethal force against anyone who's standing on the wrong side of the property line. But when it comes to the occupation of Palestine, uh, overwhelmingly Americans seem to still support uh, the Zionist uh, agenda. Uh, but the only thing that seems to work is resistance and armed resistance. Palestinians try to give peace a chance by unilaterally reducing their use of uh, 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 the tactic of of bombings and other such things and lethal attacks on on Israelis after the second intifada by by almost a hundred percent by 95 percent over a 10-year period and the response on the part of the occupation was to ramp up full military assaults on the people of Gaza and others so and the, the increase, only thing and the increase that of left, so left them is armed resistance and the increase of settlements as well, expanding Israeli yes. occupation. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for your insight. Let me thank our guests for their contribution. Mukhaimar Abu Sada is a professor of political science at Al Azhar University, joining us from the besieged, militarily, Israeli militarily besieged the Gaza city. And we also had uh, Barry Grossman, international lawyer, political analyst. Barry, thank you very much indeed, who joined us from Bali. That brings an end to this edition of the News Review.